Welcome back. You're watching ED Insight. So far, the private equity industry has been dominated by large institutions and one odd entrepreneur led firms. But with global investors increasing the exposure to India, an entire army of professionals, either from within the industry or outside, is launching their own funds. What are their plans and how do they hope to stand out in a crowded industry? Nikhil Shivdas has the details. A trained Carnatic singer, a single mother, a keen traveller and one of the most powerful people in India's PE market. Renuka Ramnath is no ordinary woman. For 10 years, she steered ICICI Venture into leadership position, making it India's largest private sector PE fund. Over the years, Ramnath has played many roles in the companies ICICI Venture has invested in. A mentor, a friend, a partner, an investor and sometimes even a board member. But March last year, she chose to walk away and start over, this time on her own. One of the big questions was, you know, who's your sponsor? I mean, and, or who's the promoter? And the oft expected answer was that there would be some large family behind this, known families, you know, who are considered as highly reputed and successful industrial houses. But to say that, no, it is just the team and I will be leading the team and it is, uh, uh, you know, in some sense my dream, which I would fulfill along with my team, was in itself a very uh, transformational experience. It wasn't the best time to go solo. The world markets were in a tizzy and money was tough to come by. So when Ramnath launched her fund, Multiples Asset Management, no one expected big ticket fundraising. But the response wasn't bad at all. The fund managed to raise $250 million in the first round from the Indian Overseas Bank, Andhra Bank, the Canada Pension Plan Investment Board and UK's Development Fund of Funds, CDC. The fund has a target of $450 million and will close shortly. Renuka Ramnath is not alone. In the past three to four years, many experienced fund managers have quit established firms and given up lucrative careers to start their own funds. Funds that act as an alternative option for companies that are not able to get backing from bigger PE and VC firms. I think it's a natural progression, right? What happens is that we've seen this in the developed countries. There are people, you know, they've got the credibility, they have the track record, they want to kind of break out on their own. The question though is, how different will entrepreneur-driven PE funds be from those promoted by global and domestic financial giants? When there are ups and downs in enterprises, you can, as an entrepreneur, be a little more assured that you are dealing with people who have been with you through the journey. So the churn that is uh, often seen in large institutions, where there is a little bit of loss of relationship as you nurture these young enterprises, uh, is, is not there. You talk to the decision makers so you can be on the same page. And as entrepreneurs ourselves, we will show a lot of empathy uh, to the entrepreneurs with whom we are dealing with on the other side of the table because we go through the same journey uh, ourselves. But stepping into the shoes of the entrepreneur of course means going through a similar grind, beginning with basics like raising money. When markets are rising, raising money is never an issue. But it's when credit markets clam up, like they did in the wake of the Lehman crisis, that the fundraiser's metal gets tested. With their organizational support structure gone, the PE startups have to raise money based on personal connections, experience and old track records. So how does one manage to pull this off? Ex-City Ventures executive Ajay Raylan, who launched his fund early on, recounts the enormousness of the task. It was a terrible environment. Uh, I think the world had gone to hell in a handbasket, certainly the financial world. Uh, but there were, I think, people who uh, took notice of the fact that this was a team that uh, was unique. It had uh, long years of experience. It had worked together. The team dynamics was, uh, was something that uh, people also thought were, 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 were very, very good. Um, and uh, those who listened, I thought, uh, saw that this was a differentiated story they could invest in. So uh, uh, despite running into some very uh, heavy weather, we managed to get through our first close in March of 2009 at uh, upwards of $200 million, I think which was quite heartening. 
Okay, so one can raise the money, but it's not an easy job. Especially if you consider that one needs to convince foreign investors. The only challenge in terms of capital allocation to India comes when people try to compare India with China. China is ahead in terms of the returns that they have given and the amount of capital that they are able to take in. The challenge is, will people allocate capital to India? And if they will, I think they will be keen to work with professional managers with accomplished track record like me. That's the situation for the first round of funding. The real issues start cropping up when one has to go out and raise money for the second round. For the next fund, we'll have to produce results. So we have to start really making some money and showing people we can make money. And we expect to do that and that should draw money for the next fund. So what's the magic formula to deliver those returns? Most of these fund managers put it quite simply. Do smaller size deals and target small to mid-sized companies that fly below the radar of large PE investors. With this in mind, entrepreneurs are targeting those sectors that could provide the next breakthrough or breakout technologies. We were very interested in telecom. There are already far too many telephony uh, players. So we didn't go into telephony, but we thought as the growth continues, as millions of people subscribe each week for new phones, they're going to need to put up more antenna to carry those telephone calls. So let's go into the tower business. A lot of money is going to be spent in setting up retail formats. Anything that feeds off this in terms of uh, point of sale terminals, infrastructure for them, warehousing, RFID solutions uh, is another area that we want to play in. So you always are on the lookout for for that differentiated story, for that, you know, that stone that has not been turned and what lies beneath. So there are going to be uh, things that we'll do which would be somewhat, you know, off the beaten track as well. That thinking is what could fundamentally change the nature of the PE and VC industry in India. Because these fund managers are aggressively scouting for alternative new ideas. And as of now, it seems like the sky is the limit. So what sectors is a resurgent industry betting on? We'll give you the list in just a bit. Stay with us. We are witnessing a transformation in the Indian business and financial landscape. Only this